Hello everybody and welcome to a different kind of video. Um, I know this is late. This is uh, September 12th, after September 11th. Um, I was going to make a video, but I didn't have time yesterday. I was a little busy so because of school and all that. So today I will be making a video explaining the story of the man in the red bandana. Um... So, it's going to probably be like a short 5 to 10 minute video, pretty short, um, just the backstory and what he did, and also a couple other things about 9-11 that happened, and um, yeah, let's just get into it. So, his name was Wallace Crowther, and his uh, dad, when he was little, he was very playful and active. He was a very good lacrosse player, but... um. He was known for wearing a red bandana and also having that red bandana to gather sweat whenever he played lacrosse. All of his friends would make fun of him for it, but he took pride in having it. So I guess you could say he was a, a very prideful person with that red bandana. His father gave it to him when he was little, and he took it everywhere he went. That continued on until high school, lacrosse, everything. And eventually, he started to work at the um, World Trade Center. And he, I think, was in one of, I don't know which tower. I'm just going to say he was in one of the towers. Um, so, he, as you could know, every single level of the buildings, some of them were different companies. Like, there would be two levels of the, like, there would be two stories of the building to a company, or one story, or whatever, to a company, and he was on a really high floor, but he wasn't as high as where the plane had hit into the building, he was below it, so he was there, and there was a really loud boom, he saw what happened, he had seen everything there, there was a lady that was like in some pretty I'm pretty sure she was in so much shock that she could just not move. So he picked her up and brought her down and there was firefighters and stuff. He brought them down to he brought her down to them. They left the building with her. He saved like a dozen people that day. And then he went up. He told the firefighters he was going back up. I'm pretty sure the building was made out of steel. And that jet fuel and the fire and the whole thing just kind of melted that steel. So he went up again to go save more people. And all of a sudden, the building collapsed with him inside. Um, and nobody knew it was him. Nobody knew who it was. They just reportedly had seen a man with a red bandana covering his lower face now from nose down. And they thought that was very strange but instead of just keeping it to themselves they took it to news and all that um his parents found that information and they were like hey that's our son and they were like hey is this the person you recognized and the person who was saved said yes and um like i said he was a very good lacrosse player and He's memorized every 9-11, and the fact that he's he went from someone who was just an average person to a, a hero in a matter of minutes is just crazy. I mean, people would say differently, but in my opinion, it's crazy. It just is, um, and there's nothing to it. It's just, it's crazy how he could be such a hero within such a short amount of time. His story was short-lived, but the telling of the story was not. It's still told to this day, 22 years later. He was about, I'm pretty sure he was 22 years old when he passed away from 9-11. And um, he was, yeah, he was known around the world for that. He was a very popular person because of his um, hero heroistic acts and it and he 
his parents miss him, obviously, and the fact that uh, his dad, you just, you guys should really watch, like, a, there's a video on YouTube somewhere on here where his dad kind of talks about the events that took place that day and how he felt about it. It's very emotional, I will admit. I didn't cry or I didn't get upset. I was just, it was a very serious thing. People think it's a joke, but it's not. It's not a funny joke if people are joking about it, bro. I'm tired of seeing jokes like this. Jokes about 9-11? No, not funny. I thought it was funny at first, but then I realized how the, how many people were affected by it and how much people lost that day. And I was just making, I was just laughing at people making jokes of it. Who was I to think that that was smart? Who was I to think that I was a good person for that? Let's be honest. Nobody's going to laugh at something so stupid unless they're immature. Because people died. Obviously. It's a big situation. And the fact that people don't take it seriously is exactly why we can't have... We can't have good things. We can't have good things because people don't take the real things serious. Everything is taken as a joke. Everyone thinks everything's funny. It's not. And if you're watching this video and you know you know who you are. You know who you are. If you make jokes about 9-11, you know who you are. You just do. If you make jokes about topics that are very sensitive to other people, you know who you are. And I know that this is very stupid to make jokes about it, but it's serious. Like, yeah. Like, it's stupid that I'm ranting about people making jokes about 9-11, but like, come on. Who is that immature that they're willing to bring up a topic that can be sensitive to other people and just randomly make jokes about it? Like... That's just as bad as saying that 9-11 was a good thing. It's just about the same exact thing. Nobody's going to like you for that. And if you make those jokes, you know who you are. You do. All right, let's go on. Um, Let me just tell you all of the flights. I don't know which numbers. I can't remember the numbers, but I'll tell you in general. There were four flights. One of them was aimed for the White House, and it went down in Shanksville, very close to me. Well, no, probably an hour away or something. Uh, Shanksville. It came down in Shanksville. Um, and the three others actually made it to their destination. One of them hitting the Pentagon, one of them hitting the North Tower, and one of them hitting the South. Um, yeah. Like I said... If you make jokes about 9-11, you know who you are. You know you know your place in society. There is a deep, deep, dark place for you. There is a special throne for you in hell. There is. It's no joke. This isn't a laughing matter. But, yeah, the man in the red bandana was, um... He was a hero that day. He helped a lot of people. He lost his life in the process of saving other people. He took action instead of just sitting there and letting it happen. He stood up and took action. He didn't just sit there and watch it happen and let everyone die. He took action. He took action. He just did. If you're going to say any differently, then too bad. You're wrong. He took action when nobody else wanted to, when nobody else could. People were shocked. So shocked that they were just sitting still. He was a hero. And people who don't realize that are people who are immature. If you are so immature that you have to take your own place in society to the lowest notch, then what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? What have we done in our society to deserve someone like you? Nothing. You are completely and utterly disgusting for that. It's vile. 
It's, it's, oh my God, it's terrible. It's horrendous. Yeah, like I said, there's a special place, a special throne. There is a special little place for you in hell, buddy. And they're waiting for you. They will be waiting for you because of what you know what you've done. So don't test reality because it's not going to end well. Don't make jokes about things that aren't funny. It's not good. I mean, you're crazy if you think it is. But yeah. Let me just sum it up about the man in the red bandana. He was a hero that day. He saved about a dozen or more people in that time when nobody else could or nobody else wanted to. Everyone else was too scared to help. He wasn't. He got up and took action with that red bandana over his face to cover from the dust and metals and stuff get to get from getting in his lungs because he was a hero. Hope you guys enjoyed this video explaining what happened on that day. Um, if next year I'll probably make another video like this, but on time, but yeah, that is about the red man, the man in the red bandana.